Okay, so this episode was a lot, and that cliffhanger. Oh my god, the studios need to pay writers and actors what they are worth, like now, because I don't know how long I'm supposed to handle waiting for a follow-up, but it can't be more than a year, it just can't. Hi internet, I'm Ren, and I want to talk about the Strange New World season 2 finale, Hegemony. I'll give you some brief, spoiler-free thoughts up top before we get around the transporter block and beam right into the nitty-gritty. This was a really strong season finale that I found myself enjoying a lot more than I expected to. Without giving too much away, the Federation faces off against the Gorn again, and Pike has some tough decisions to make if they want to avert a war. I'm not really the biggest fan of the more action-heavy episodes generally, but this one stands out, especially among episodes of Modern Trek. The stakes feel earned with this conflict simmering in the background all season, and the Gorn are a terrifying and formidable enemy. I think the episode does a good job at starting at one emotional level and then building very quickly to tension that continues to mount throughout the story as it progresses. This episode had all of the drama and big moments I would expect from a season finale, and it ends with one of Star Trek's famous cliffhangers. I was definitely a bit stressed out when I checked how much of the episode was left and realized they were going to leave us in suspense and make this a two-parter. My poor little heart can't take it. I gotta know that our little guys are gonna be okay. (laughs) Ah! But okay, that's about all I've got without getting into the details. So spoilers for Strange New Worlds so far from here on out, as well as for TNG's Best of Both Worlds, part one and two. The overall plot of this episode is pretty simple, but it has a lot of moving parts and what amounts to a bit of an A, B, and arguably C plot within the overarching story. The main storyline of the episode is that Captain Patel's ship, the Cayuga, is assisting an idyllic remote colony just outside Federation space with various support needs. Nurse Chapel is also there assisting with vaccinations and beams back aboard the Cayuga right before the Gorn suddenly descend upon the colony. My God. The Cayuga and much of the colony is destroyed and the Gorn are using a device blocking comms, scanners, and transporters on and around the planet. The Enterprise receives a garbled distress call from Captain Battelle. Captain Battelle, Kaiduga, need help. Immediate evacuation. Under attack, Gorn. And they come running to help. The Gorn transmit a demarcation line that establishes the colony and the space surrounding it as their new territory. Pike calls Admiral April and tells him about the attack, and the Federation are in a difficult position because they're trying to avert all out war with the Gorn, but that means abandoning both the colonists and the Federation crew stranded with them to their fate. The Gorn attacked us. They didn't attack us. They attacked a colony outside of our jurisdiction. So of course, Pike has to wrestle with the tension between his duty to Starfleet and his love for Captain Battelle, and also generally preventing loss of life. Starfleet orders Pike to approach for reconnaissance only, but we know that's not going to stop our Boy Scout from trying to save everyone he can. It's an incredibly juicy episode that works really well as a season finale, especially with how much time we've spent building and establishing Pike and Battelle's relationship this season, which gives it some real stakes. It's even stakier because as far as I can tell, Battelle never appeared in the original series, so there's no guarantee she makes it out of this era alive. I really hope she does, though. She and Pike seem to make each other so happy, and I can almost forgive her for being a prosecutor. APAB. When the Enterprise arrives at the colony and sees what's left of the Cayuga is where the story begins to diverge into its various subplots. I'm going to give you an overview of each of them instead of jumping around like the episode does, because they packed in so much stuff. With the A plot, we have Pike taking a volunteer landing party that finally includes Ortegas. You want me to pilot the shuttle? Come on, Erica. I think you've been bugging me for months about joining a landing party. Yes, I have. Why have I been doing that? To the planet to directly defy Starfleet's orders and search for survivors. Sam goes along since he's a xenobiologist and wants to study the Gorn for weaknesses. La'an and Mbenga go as well. And Ortegas flies the shuttle to evade Gorn sensors. One of my favorite scenes in the episode is Ortegas having a blast with her flight maneuvers, while the rest of the away team looks shit terrified. I thought you were a test pilot. They're armed with special weapons and tech that Starfleet has developed and equipped all of their ships with in event of a Gorn encounter. La'an is very pessimistic about the whole thing. There's 5,000 people here, bound to be survivors. 
I wouldn't bet on it. Pike is more optimistic. He made it out. They encounter some Gorn younglings who seem to be acting strangely and murdering each other less than usual. They discover survivors, including Captain Battelle and, more importantly, Scotty, played by Martin Quinn. You're not gone. Obviously. You shouldn't have walked into my gone trap then. Who is actually the first Scottish actor to play the character. He's great though. I love him. Scotty is probably the TOS character I've been most excited to see more of in Strange New Worlds, although I hope we also get to keep Pelia around a while longer. It would be nice if he gets to hang around and be mentored by Pelia or something though. That would be super cute. We also find out later in the episode that Scotty is a former student of Pelia's, so I really hope this is what they're setting up with that. Professor. You two know each other? One of my best students, who sadly received some of my worst grades. Please, Star Trek writers, if you're watching this. Scotty survived the destruction of the solar research ship he was on by disguising his shuttle with a device he put together. Scotty tells them that the Gorn may have attacked due to unusual solar flare activities. Something about the flares brought them out. And all of a sudden, there they were, like a swarm. Sam theorizes they are like locusts. With locusts, environmental factors can trigger a swarming instinct, causing them to consume. What if it's the same with the Gorn? Scotty crashed on the planet immediately after, and it was actually his shuttle that we see right before the Gorn arrive at the start of the episode. Pike, Patel, and Scotty venture out into the Gorn-infested city to find Scotty's shuttle so they can escape and destroy the device. After a Gorn they encounter runs away from them, Battelle reveals she's infected and has less than a day until the eggs mature. Bummer. She plans to pull a hammer and sacrifice herself to destroy the device, but luckily the B-plot beats her to it. She, Pike, and Scotty are all safely beamed aboard the Enterprise, which gives Starfleet Medical the chance to hopefully save her. We won't know her fate until season three. I'm really hoping she comes out of it okay. If there's one sign we can't stop it, I need you to take me out. Please don't do this to me, Star Trek writers. In the B-plot, the crew of the Enterprise is trying to find a way to destroy the dampening device without firing on it and technically violating their orders. Uhura and Pelia devise a plan to attach rockets to the remains of the Cayuga and intentionally crash it into the device on the planet. Spock volunteers to attach the rockets and is allegedly the only crew member who can do so. I'm the only member of the crew who can pull this off. If it is to succeed, it must be me. Not sure why, it looks pretty easy when he's actually doing it, but okay, it's gotta be Spock. In the sort of C plot, B sub point one plot, Spock is struggling with the fact that Chapel may have been killed when the Cayuga was destroyed. It is possible someone could have survived. I would never tell you not to hope. I want Chapel to be alive too. And he feels a lot of guilt that things ended badly between them and that they were fighting when they last spoke. Things did not end well between us. We were in a fight. It's pretty moving, but of course it's just another chapel death fake out. And honestly, although they tried to build some tension around it, I thought it was a little silly since we know she's alive in TOS. And even if she wasn't, I just don't see them killing her off, you know? But Spock thinks she's dead. Sick bay is gone. Again, and is having a hard time with it. Again. Chapel is alive on the remains of the Cayuga and spots Spock installing the rockets. She puts on a spacesuit and sneaks past to Gorn to get to him. The Gorn attacks Spock and Chapel manages to grab his phaser and shoot it, which gives Spock an opening to shove some rebar or whatever through its helmet. One nice little detail I kind of enjoyed from that sequence was that we see Chapel hook her foot under one of the consoles so she has leverage to turn herself around since there's no gravity where the bridge is exposed to space. It just adds an extra little element of realism that makes the whole scene work a little bit more for me. Spock and Chapel are reunited and they jetpack on out of there and we get a shot of them holding hands before the debris destroys the device and they're beamed aboard. Honestly, if that wasn't just a comforting gesture of friendship and they're trying to resume the will they won't they stuff with Spock and Chapel, I'm gonna be mad. I don't like to have my emotions toyed with. I'm not interested in any other love polygons involving those two. I think the guilt stuff works well, but it does ultimately feel like we're retreading a lot of the same ground with these characters as the 
season two premiere. It's okay as a bookend, but also a bit weird to reuse essentially the same plot twice in such a short season. Like, why does he always got to think she's dead to have an emotional revelation about her? What is your deal, Spock? <laughs> the subplots converge back into the main story, and Pike, who is extremely relieved to see that Chapel is alive, asks her to save Patel. Scotty and Pelia are reunited, and Pike heads to the bridge where he discovers that the rest of the away team and the surviving colonists were snatched by the Gorn and taken God knows where. The Federation is ordering their immediate withdrawal, and the crew is looking to a frozen Pike for orders, while several Gorn ships are firing on them, and we end on a to-be-continued. It is a classic Trek two-parter. It's not quite as dramatic as the end of Best of Both Worlds Part 1, which was the season finale to season 3 of Star Trek The Next Generation, and left us with Captain Picard assimilated by the Borg and Riker preparing to fire on him. Mr. Worf. Fire. But it's clear that's the energy the writers were going for, and I do think they were pretty successful. Fans only had to wait three months to find out what happened to Captain Picard, but especially with the strikes happening, which again, I support wholeheartedly. We'll be waiting a lot longer for the conclusion. Although, when we finally do get it, I really want Majel Barrett's And now, the conclusion. Voiceover for part two, please and thank you. This is Strange New World's first two-parter, and so far it doesn't feel like they're abusing the privilege. I think that while it wasn't necessarily a better episode than A Quality of Mercy, it might be a better season finale. The Gorn confrontation has been building with little hints since the start of the season, and this was some pretty high stakes payoff while still leaving the possibility of somehow averting an actual war. I was worried this storyline would end up dominating the season when it was foreshadowed, so I'm glad it ultimately stayed mostly contained to this episode, and obviously the first episode of season three. The Gorn are certainly menacing, although I admit when I saw the one Gorn adult we see in this episode wearing his little space suit, it led me to wonder how the Gorn have spacefaring tech if they're so feral and violent, but maybe they went the Kazon route and brutalized the tech away from a more peaceful species that had the misfortune to encounter them. I guess the tech can also advance quickly from military applications, and we've seen that the Gorn are at least slightly organized and communicative with one another, but it just seems hard to square what we've seen of their nature with their level of development. We've seen hunting species like the Herogen in Voyager, but I had much less difficulty believing there were Herogen scientists than I do believing that they exist among the Gorn, whose motivations and portrayal, generally from what we've seen, is pretty flatly evil and single-mindedly violent. At this point, I'm not sure they'd be able to get away with a story that tries to give them more depth even if they tried. That said, they're definitely alien-inspired baddies and work well for the purpose of horror-themed episodes, which is what they're generally used in. I do also kind of like the idea that not every enemy can be reasoned with or has a sense of decency that can be appealed to. It is a little funny when I think of their TOS appearance, though. Ugh, how far they've come. Although, I honestly don't love the CGI Gorn designs. I wish they could do something practical because I think it just looks so much better, but I guess it's at least a step up from Species 8472 in Voyager, so it could be worse. One thing I liked about the setup was the way they showed us that idyllic, relatable, small-town life right before the apocalyptic destruction destruction the Gorn wreak upon the colony. It was effective visual shorthand to instantly build to a level of tension and horror and contrasting emotional levels that help us get into the mindset of the survivors and the landing party. I think it was a similarly smart choice to spend so much time building Pike and Battelle's relationship as it gets more serious and showing us how deeply Pike cares about her, because that makes us care a lot more about her than we would about another familiar side character. Even the loss of the Cayuga, a ship we've seen alongside Enterprise throughout the series so far, feels like kind of a heavy blow. The reaction of the crew of the Enterprise when they come upon the wreckage is quite moving, just quiet shock and devastation. Hegemony is a really good title for this episode, and for the Gorn's organizational structure. Hegemony is a word that specifically carries connotations of supremacy and domination. For example, the United States is considered a hegemon by many due to its constant military meddling around the world. So it applies well to a species that cruises around the galaxy subjugating its prey. I enjoyed the Gorn emergency crates that the Federation has handed out to all of its ships. That's an interesting tidbit about how they operate and make contingencies when there's an imminent threat like the Gorn. Although I'd argue more of the command structure should be aware of it in case the captain is captured or killed or something, and there should maybe be some Gordon protocols in place. 
As you're well aware of if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm not a huge lover of action-focused Trek and tend to prefer episodes that are more emotional or cerebral, so I was surprised how much I enjoyed this episode. I have no idea what to do with myself while we wait to find out what happens next. But I think I've rambled on about this episode long enough. Now that we're done with this season of Strange New Worlds, I'll probably put together a video with my thoughts about the season overall, so look out for that, and I will still be reviewing Futurama every week as it comes out. I'll also be reviewing each episode of Lower Decks when they start coming out in September, but in the meantime, I'll be on the hunt for more video ideas, so feel free to drop anything you'd like to see me do a video about in the comments section and you just might see it. That is all I have for you for now. Let me know what you thought about the season 2 finale of Strange New Worlds in the comments section down below. What do you think is going to happen in the conclusion? Do you think Patel is going to make it? I would love to hear your theories. Please do me a solid and like, share, and subscribe to help my tiny channel grow. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Vitor Zane.